Hello friends, Chris here with ISK Recording. When I was starting out in audio recording, being able to decipher all the inputs and outputs of an interface was something that kind of stumped me. For instance, let's take a look at this interface. It has 18 inputs and 24 outputs. Do you know what all those inputs and outputs are? If not, then this video is for you, especially if you're in the market for a new recording interface because this stuff is really important to understand. I found a good exercise in helping me understand all the connectivity of an interface was to look at pictures of different interfaces and try to figure out what all the inputs and outputs are. It's important to keep in mind that the main function of an interface is to route audio to and from the computer. And there's two types of audio that can be routed, analog and digital. Analog audio is an electrical current that represents a sound wave, and digital audio is zeros and ones that the computer can recognize and process. Both analog and digital have a few different signal types and different connection options that they use. Typical analog inputs are microphone inputs, which use an XLR connector, line level inputs, which usually use a quarter inch balanced connector, but sometimes they use an XLR, and direct inject inputs, which are quarter inch unbalanced, and they're optimized to receive the high impedance input of a guitar. Ultimately, the goal of the analog inputs is to send a line level signal to the analog to digital converter. A microphone has a very weak signal output and it needs to go through a preamp in order to be amplified to line level. The direct quarter inch output of a guitar also needs to be amplified through a preamp, except preamps are designed to receive a low impedance signal such as a microphone, whereas the output of a guitar is high impedance. So the signal coming out of a guitar needs to go through a little electrical circuit that lowers the impedance before it goes into the preamp. That way the preamp can get optimal sound quality. Since preamps can be expensive, most audio interfaces don't provide preamps on all of the analog input channels, only some of them. And the rest of the analog input channels need to receive a line level signal. So here's a schematic of the signal flow inside the interface when connecting a microphone. The signal goes from the microphone into the preamp, where it is boosted to line level, and then it goes to the AD converter and to the computer. If you plug a guitar in, the signal first goes through a transformer which lowers the impedance, then to the preamp, then to the AD conversion, then to the computer. If you have a keyboard or an electronic instrument with line outputs, you would plug those straight into the inputs where it bypasses the preamp and goes straight to the AD conversion and to the computer. Same goes if you have an external preamp. Since its output is already line level, you would plug it into a line input. Usually a microphone input can also have the option of being used as a line input. Sometimes they will use a combo jack like this, which can accept XLR or quarter inch. Now it's worth noting that when you plug a line level signal into the line input of an interface, most interfaces will bypass the preamp, but there are some poorly designed interfaces that do not. They simply put the audio through a pad first and that lowers the volume and then they route the audio through the preamp, which boosts it up again. Now in the rare cases of interfaces that do this, using an external preamp is completely pointless because the audio still goes through the internal preamp and still goes through that loss of fidelity. And now we'll talk about digital connectivity. The most common types are ADAT, SPDIF, and AES-EBU. With these, the role of the interface is simply to route the digital information, and you'll need to get a specialized piece of external hardware to do the conversion, which is called a converter. ADAT uses an optical cable called TOSLINK, which can carry eight channels of digital audio at one time sample rate. If you don't know what one time sample rate is, then check out lesson four on digital audio. The SPDIF, which I call SPDIF, it uses an RCA connector and it can carry two channels of digital audio. And AES-EBU uses an XLR connector and it can also carry two channels of digital audio at any sample rate per connector. But with AES-EBU, quite often they come in banks of eight and they'll use a DB25 connector, which has a breakout of eight XLRs, and that can be used to carry 16 channels of digital audio at any sample rate. Now the headphone outputs of an audio interface are a little bit of a wild card. See, technically a headphone output requires a left and a right, so two channels of digital to analog conversion. So technically they could count that as two more output channels. Some manufacturers will count that in the in and out capabilities of the interface and some manufacturers don't. Now let's take a look at a few different interfaces and go over the inputs and outputs that are available. Here's a Focusrite ATI20. For inputs, it has eight combo jacks which can accept XLR for plugging in a microphone or quarter inch for line inputs. These are the analog inputs and all eight have preamps. The other inputs are digital inputs. On the far left is a SPDIF connector which is capable of two channels, so now we're at a total of 10 inputs, and here's the ADAT which adds eight more channels and brings our total number of inputs up to 18. 
Now for outputs, we have 10 line outputs here, which are analog, and then two channels of SPDIF and eight channels of ADAT, bringing the total to 20 outputs, hence the name 18i20. This interface also has two headphone outputs on the front panel, which they don't include as part of the output count. Now here's a Universal Audio Apollo 18x24. For inputs, we have 8 analog and 10 digital. Right here are the 8 analog inputs. Four of these analog inputs have preamps and can have a microphone plugged into them. Since they didn't use combo jacks, right here is where you would plug a microphone into channels 1 to 4. By having a separate input jack, it's a clear indicator that the line inputs do not force the audio to go through the preamp. That's a good thing. And on the front panel is the high Z input, also called high impedance input, for channels 1 and 2 for direct injecting a guitar. Although channels 1 and 2 have separate connectors for high Z inputs, microphone inputs, and line level inputs, you cannot use all three simultaneously. You would select through the software which one of these three is the active input. And the digital connection has one ADAT. Although there's actually two Toslink connectors for the input, the second one is only used so there's not a loss of channel count at two times sample rates. I explained this in lesson four on digital audio. And there are two channels of SPDIF digital inputs, all for a total of 18 inputs. For outputs, right here we have 10 analog outputs, and right here we have eight digital outputs through ADAT, and right here we have two digital outputs through SPDIF. Now the four remaining outputs are from the two headphone jacks on the front panel, and that makes up the channel count of 24 outputs. And I'll give one more example here, it's the Metric Halo ULN8. This is a very simple design. It has eight analog inputs and outputs, and eight digital inputs and outputs. They all use the DB25 connector, which connect to a breakout cable with XLRs. There are eight preamps, so each channel of analog input has the option of using the preamp or the line input. If you want to plug a microphone into the preamp, you would plug it into the breakout cable that goes into here. If you want to use the line input, you would connect it to the breakout cable that plugs into here. Although you can connect both a microphone and a line input to the same channel, within the software you must select one or the other as the input. And channels 1 and 2 have a high Z input on the front panel for connecting a guitar. If you want to use the high Z input, you must select it in the software, and that will disable the microphone input and the line input for those channels. And it has 8 channels of digital inputs and 8 channels of digital outputs through the AES EBU on this DB25 connector. For a long time I found all this stuff very confusing, so I hope I was able to explain it in a way that makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments section down below, and if you found this video to be helpful, please do me a big favor and hit that like button. Just go ahead right now, click that thumbs up button right there, and I would really appreciate that. I'm going to be coming out with tons more videos from beginner to advanced, so feel free to subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more about audio engineering. I'll see you in the next video.